Alright, welcome to another video, and before we get started, I'd like to take a quick minute to thank all the Patreon supporters and YouTube channel members whose names you see scrolling across the screen right now. Uh, they make this financially possible, and without you, I probably wouldn't be here making videos, so thank you. Welcome back to another video. As you can see, we're flying the Swordfish once again. Seems to be a trend lately, but I kind of enjoy flying it, so we're still working on the tune and chasing perfection. Um, in the last video I posted with it, I had updated some parameters and uh, we talked about some of that stuff for the Nav-1, uh, the Nav-L1 uh, controller in Arduplane. And the goal was to get it to track a little bit straighter and kind of quit the left and right snaking left and right it was doing on heading, kind of rolling in and out of it. And uh, I mean, if you've been watching my videos, you know what I'm talking about. And we did improved that a lot but it still wasn't exactly perfect and I really wanted to get to the underlying issue I had kind of written it off as something was up with the VTAIL or whatever just maybe a weird trait of the forward sweat VTAIL or something else crazy going on like that and I got it pretty close to perfect but it wasn't exactly perfect and I knew it could still be better if I could get to that underlying cause so I did and what you see right now is some testing I was doing after I fixed the actual problem. And it, as you can see, it's kind of mid-afternoon and there's still some daytime heating and a little bit gusty wind and everything going on. So it's not exactly the best conditions to kind of get the airplane flying straight and smooth and get a real feel for how it's going to track in navigation modes, in this case in cruise. And even on the the previous flights I had seen when the problem was still there and, and, and a bigger issue and more obvious even even then back then on a windy gusty day it was kind of masked by the fact that the airplane was getting bumped around and fighting the wind and everything so it was kind of busy doing other things and didn't really kind of fall into that oscillation um, so toward the end of this you'll see another flight I did on in the dead calm which was kind of the final test but anyway, while we watch it doing this thing, you can see I'm just kind of flying in cruise right now and coming up here when we get to this little corner of the field straight ahead, we'll turn and gain some altitude and we're just kind of pretty much hunting for smoother air. And uh, it's like I said, I'm going to talk about what the actual problem was and how I fixed it. And to be honest, I'm also almost a little bit embarrassed to admit the mistake because it was a mistake on my part just something very simple that I overlooked and kind of goes all the way back to the very basics of flying an RC airplane but nonetheless I got caught up in all the more important things and more sophisticated stuff and overlooked a simple mistake so looking back at some of the logs from the previous lights when the problem was more obvious and and a bigger issue than it was later once I started tuning it out or pretty not necessarily tuning it out because that was the wrong approach, but I was basically tuning the airplane so that it was kind of masking the issue. Um, but anyway, looking back to, to those earlier logs, I kind of noticed that it wasn't necessarily an oscillation in the heading or the track that was kind of oscillating either side of the intended heading or the intended ground track. What it was actually doing, it was always oscillating on the left side of the intended heading. I noticed it would basically what it was doing it would swing the nose to the left and then it would pull itself back and then it would kind of swing the nose to the left and then it would pull itself back on track and the reason that was showing up as a roll oscillation is that orgy plane in a navigation mode it uses a roll input mixed with y'all to do a coordinated turn to stay on track and and to turn at, at waypoints or to turn around and go back to home if you trigger return to launch or something like that when it's actually making a, a, a intended turn, an intentional turn in a navigation mode, it uses a roll input mixed with yaw. And in my case, I had lowered that mix in yaw and it was doing mostly roll. Um, but what kind of caught my attention was the fact that it was always turning to the left side and then pulling back on track and then turning to the left and then pulling back on track. And I'm going to cut myself off right here and just kind of point out that we're doing a return to launch test right now. It's kind of what's going on in the background in the video. Um, so now while the airplane continues to fly home, it just made a nice, smooth, coordinated turn there. Now it's going to fly itself back home. And I'll continue where I was kind of explaining what was going on. So 
noticing that the airplane was always kind of getting off track and and yawing and and heading was turning to the left and then it would pull itself back on track and then turn to the left again pull itself back on track they got me thinking so it's not necessarily an oscillation like something's overshooting or or some gain somewhere is too high or something something like that it kind of started me thinking that maybe something's out of trim maybe the airplane is kind of turning to the left or pulling to the left maybe one motor's pulling stronger than the other one maybe the left motor is weak the right motor stronger something going on like that and i'm running a d shot protocol d shot 600 on the escs so i don't think it was an issue with esc calibration because when you run a d shot there is no esc calibration there's nothing wrong with adverse yaw or anything like that or with uh thrust difference or not i don't know why i said adverse yaw but there's there shouldn't be anything related to like differential thrust or anything like that because i don't have any setup in the airplane the servo or the uh, ESCs are plugged into two separate servo outputs on the flight controller, but both of those outputs are just mapped to basic throttle output and receiving the same signal. So everything should be matched up. Um, so beyond that, the only other thing I could think was maybe the rudder trim, or in this case, rudder vaders. Um, because it's a V-tail. There's no elevator, no rudders. There's two surfaces that act as both rudders and elevators. Um, now, I had kind of looked over this before after I ran the servo auto trim. Because I, I do have servo auto trim enabled in the first flight in any airplane I do with RD plane. I let it trim itself. It does a good job of it. I like it. And after it does its thing, I look back and I confirm that the trims did change. Um... And again, I'm going to kind of explain what's going on with the video because I see we just switched over to that later flight later in the afternoon. And this is where th this was the real test where everything's kind of, I don't want to say just buttery smooth and silky calm because there is the occasional little gust here and there. And you can see I'm actually flying this down at 15, 16 feet for most of this. And the point was there was kind of a little layer of smooth air down low and any higher than this was kind of still rough and bumpy. So we're just kind of down in that low, low layer of calm air close to the ground. But pay attention to how well it tracks. This is all done in cruise mode and it's tracking nice and smooth and straight. And the airplane just flies buttery smooth in general. Um, and you can see after I swing around here, I'm going to fly back. And there's two fences between the two cow pastures. And they kind of run together and make a nice little lane to kind of treat it as if it were a, a big full scale runway or something like that. Just gives you something to kind of line up on and run it. And the entire length of that little lane between the two fences, I flew that completely hands off. And you can kind of see that coming up right under the center of the OSD right there above the nose. You kind of see those two fence lines that we're going to line up on them. So back to what I was talking about, the trims. After I ran the auto trims, I did verify that all the center points for the servo outputs had changed. Auto trim had done its thing and I went on, moved on, left it at that. So when I kind of started thinking about maybe a trim issue, I looked back at the trims for the rudder vaders. And now the way the servos and the linkages are set up in the airplane physically, um, to give an, an, an elevator input, a pitch input, either up or down, the two elevators move in the opposite direction. One rotates clockwise, one rotates counterclockwise to move the tail surfaces in the same direction for pitch control. And I noticed that the... To the rudder vader servos were trimmed in the opposite direction by the exact same amount off center. I don't remember the exact number right now. It was like 31 or 32 milliseconds off center or something like that. But one was trimmed 31 milliseconds one direction. One was 31 milliseconds the other direction. So that was a pitch trim, but there was no yaw trim. So I actually went back and looked at the RG Pilot documentation. And sure enough, auto trim only trims pitch and roll. And I've never taken the time to manually trim the yaw axis on any of my airplanes that, that have a rudder control or yaw control, or in this case, case yaw mixing in the tail. Um, it's just always worked for me, and I never really needed it. Uh, so I just kind of assumed that it was trimmed, but it wasn't. So, sure enough, took the airplane up, flew in fly-by-wire, hands-off, which basically just levels pitch and roll, set my throttle to my cruise throttle setting, and didn't touch the sticks. And exactly as expected, the airplane 
slowly swung the nose over to the left. It wasn't blatantly obvious, but over time it would slowly change heading to the left. So I manually trimmed the yaw axis, fly in and fly by wire like that, put input some trim on my radio using radio trim till everything was tracking straight and true, landed, looked at the servo midpoints in manual with hands off at center stick and transferred those uh, servo midpoints to the actual servo outputs, reset the trim on my radio back to zero and took it back up and the result is what you see here. Everything looks really good, works fine, and that was the underlying issue. So the funny thing is all the NAV L1 controller tuning that we did, we loosened all that up. I can probably go back and tighten that back up closer to defaults and it should track even better. At least that's the theory. So uh, I guess that's going to be the end of the video. That's where I'm at with the Swordfish, making progress, figuring it out. Kind of admitting my mistake, hopefully to help others learn from it. And I know I did. And uh, I don't know should be better going forward. So stay tuned for that. See you all in the next one.